Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel, the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and we are going to continue our talk about Daniel Boone and more towards and more focused on Daniel Boone in Kentucky. Um, so continuing on with uh, Daniel Boone and him moving into Kentucky, because we talked about many of his expeditions, um, uh, the loss of his son. We're getting into the big one, the big one that... Um, uh, sets the stone for Daniel Boone's legacy in, in Kentucky. Excuse me. But who, who, who is behind the, behind the strings or behind the scenes pulling the strings for all this to even happen? Well, we have, you know, one of the most ambitious businessmen, I think, in American history, in Richard Henderson. And Henderson is a, a you know, wealthy man, North Carolina, who's determined that he's going to purchase a colony of his own. And he's going to purchase Kentucky uh, from the Cherokee. And of course, they only own a small portion of Kentucky. But uh, so they're more than happy, you know, to, to sell that. <laughs> but in that, he's going to set up his own colony called Transylvania. And uh, in order to do that, you know, he, he the, the meeting happens. Uh, it's called the Treaty of Sycamore Shoals. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a deal is struck. And already people in the East are beginning to, you know, raise an eyebrow. This seems kind of <laughs> oh, a, hold on. You're What's right. going on here? <laughs> yeah, you know, Virginia and North Carolina are both, you know, this is on the radar. So it's in Henderson's best interest if he's going to convince these people that he's doing the right thing. It's going to help if you have people settled here. And so he approaches Boone, who at this point, as you said, is already kind of got a reputation for knowing the backwoods. And he wants a road cut into Kentucky. Um, and so that's where we get what would become the Wilderness Trail, you know, through the Cumberland yeah. Gap. And uh, they're not going to be the first settlers in Kentucky. And I have to throw that in there. Harrodsburg was formed the year before. It's no, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, they, they have a great spot picked out on the Kentucky River uh, in, in Madison County. And so but they've got to have the ability to get wagons there with families and supplies. And so yes. Boone. Uh, is tasked with picking a group of men and cutting his way, you know, through uh, the gap and on the warrior's path for a little bit, and then dogwegging mm -hmm. west into Kentucky. I'm glad you. I'm glad you described uh, Henderson as being ambitious, because he was 
or the most amb- ambitious man uh, in American history because he was he he was either so rich or he wanted to be so rich. He pretty much said, "I'm going to go start a state. <laughs> I'm going right. to go start my colony, and everybody else is going to have to deal with it." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, he was ambitious, ambitious. Definitely, oh, yeah. He was definitely, definitely a Slytherin, I guess. <laughs> right. This is true. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So he heads over there. Uh, uh, they, they had their spot of land. Harrisburg was first. Uh, you know, they, they, number one. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, one thing, you know, they, they start Boonesboro. They settle up Boonesboro. But, you know, I, I always kind of wonder, and which it makes sense now, that – you know, Harrodsburg, you know, became Harrod, Harrod's town, uh, so forth, and developed into to the town that it is now. But like with Boonesboro, there was never really a city, you know, or a town really that formed to an extent of Fort Logan or Fort uh, Harrod. Um, you know, they ended up moving the, I know the uh, county seat of Madison County changed a few times, but, you know, eventually just becomes Richmond. Right. Uh, I always kind of wonder, and there's probably somebody out there who kind of has a better answer that why maybe it was the location that it was on the so close to the river, but that doesn't make any sense either. The the river is always a great place to start a city. Um, So I don't know, maybe somebody has the answer out there to why Boonesboro never became a town or a city. Yeah. I blame part of it on the the steep Kentucky Hills. Cause like you say, you want to be near the river, but uh, the first site they pick floods easy. So then you end up where Boonesboro you know, is today if you go see it, which is up on the ridge, right. which is not a great place to be. I mean, you, you it's easy going down, and it's not so much fun coming up. And yeah. so you, you see, you know, other places develop like Richmond later on. And I think, you know, Lexington, which is not on a river at all, develops, but it, it siphons yeah. off uh, people to some degree because you've got McConnell mm-hmm. Springs and areas there. So as they become well-watered, more fertile, uh, you know, you, you tend to see that. And also the gap, uh, the Cumberland Gap dries up sooner than the Ohio river, as far as being a vein for travelers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're, you're no longer on, you know, I 64, you know, at some point. <laughs> um, and yeah. For that first decade, that it was a happening place to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think we said, so 1775, um, he uh, leads the expedition, um, um, which is, which is, what is the, uh, uh the month wise? I mean, they're very close haired and, um, them are pretty uh, close. I, I I don't know exactly the month or the the year. In, uh, in June of seventy five, Boone goes back to get his family, mm-hmm, and Herod mm-hmm. settles in June of seventy four. But Herod gets recalled, and I, I stop me if I'm jumping ahead. But That's Boone okay. actually gets sent to Harrodsburg and tells him that you've got to come back and help fight in Dunmore's War. So you know yeah. they they're there about a year ahead, but they leave for several months. So Herod comes mm-hmm. back in the spring with his guys in 75 and, and Boone is there in midsummer. So they're not very far apart. You're right. Just a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Herod's number one. Sorry. Sorry, Boone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so on all intents is though, uh, Henderson, uh, I guess let, let's uh, get him out of the way before we move on. Um, Henderson once, once this um, colony in uh, Boonesboro is established, they build a fort. But he wants this to be a colony, and he wants mm-hmm. representation. He wants all that stuff. He actually right. gets, you know, they actually have a meeting and and uh, get a representative. Representative, they send him to uh, um, uh, Williamsburg, but he's kind of denied, and uh, they like we're not we're not uh, honoring that. Like you said, uh, the state of Virginia and. Uh, uh, Rhode Island, or not Rhode Island, North Carolina, were both kind of going on about how they um, didn't want, um, th- they, they didn't really want this at all. They, they nulled the Treaty of Sycamore Shoals and um, pretty much was like, guys, this isn't happening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, now, in, in talking about Herod, too, they have this meeting at uh, Boonesboro, this uh, delegation, and Herod is one of the, one of the, Herod and I guess his people that he, he brought are one of the most outspoken of saying, no, 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 no. What are you guys thinking? Uh, right. This is not a good idea. Um, I, I kind of are on the side that he didn't want to uh, lose that um, Virginia connection for military support for one, 
and also for laws and land grants and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, many of those people uh, you know, were trying to claim land under the rules of Virginia. And if you roll in there and say, hold on, it's now Transylvania colony. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're making new rules. Um, well, it's probably not going to go well. And, you know, for the people at Harrodsburg, uh, you, some of the things that Henderson proposed, like when they had a meeting to form a government, and you you know no, no swearing you know uh, you should try to, you know to not aggravate the Indians that kind of thing. Herod and his guys are okay with that, but when we start talking about how to divide the land up and, and payment for land and that kind of thing as well, uh, you know in the mind of those settlers in, in Harrodsburg, they were there because they fought the French and Indian War. You know, pay who? Pay Transylvania. We were here a year ahead of you guys. And so, yeah. yeah, it really begins to fall apart. And, and Harrodsburg sends representatives to Virginia. You mentioned that meeting and they, they sent it mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to to the legislator. And they said, you know, under no circumstances are we OK with this. And I think yeah. that kind of helps put the death nail in something that was already unpopular. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much what Henderson leaves the story of, of Boone. I mean, it, you know. Important part, don't get me wrong, but uh, once once the colony and stuff kind of fell through, he was out. Uh, I think he gets he, a great uh, consolation for us. Yes, in Tennessee, correct? I think. Yes, so well, he gets to land. <laughs> I mean, is is Tennessee really a? I mean, it's not really a good consolation for us. No. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to any Tennessee listeners. Tennessee is great. <laughs> but, but, you know, Kentucky's um, the way. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so, yeah, so the colonies um, set up. Now, Boone sets up um, what becomes a very good post. Uh, many people come in. Uh, he goes back and gets his family, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, brings uh, uh, Rebecca and the rest of his family um, onto Kentucky. Um, and, well, they, I mean, settled up. I mean, you've heard many of the stories. I guess we can probably tell a few of them now. Um, his daughter is captured. Jemima is captured right. at... Um, uh, right after, right outside the fork, I believe they go over to the river, um, mm -hmm. and some Native Americans sneak up on them, uh, take them, and then uh, Boone and some more of the frontiersmen um, saddle up and make the way to uh, catch them or uh, capture them or, or retrieve them. I guess right. <laughs> capture them wouldn't make any sense, but um, pretty wild story. Whenever you're thinking about it, even from Jemima and them's point of view. Uh, about how they what they what they did to try mm -hmm. and get the boon to catch them or oh, to, yeah. uh, lead them there. I think the main moral of the story is teenagers don't always think things through, no matter what century you're in. <laughs> and you know, Jemima had a sore foot. She stepped on a corn, you know, on a corn stop and said, so "Soaking it in the Kentucky River seems like a great way to to spend an evening, but it, uh -huh. it's kind of a dangerous thing to do." And like you said, yeah. once they're captured, though. They fight their captors, and then when they are captured, they do a great job of slowing the party down to give Boone and the others time to catch up. They they uh, whine and complain, uh, talk about the injuries. Um, the other two, they, I mean, Daniel Boone has already kind of built up a reputation among amongst the Native Americans already. You know, mm -hmm. we forgot to mention that the first time he was captured um, by Native Americans because he was captured, and then we'll, we'll go back to Jemima and that one in a minute. Uh, but he was captured. That typically is how it goes. We start talking about this and all these stories start popping in your head. <laughs> uh, so he was captured once um, by uh, some Native Americans and they actually let him free and yeah. told him and his hunting partner, just go back. Everything's good. But Daniel Moon doesn't just go back. He, yeah, leave the furs and, and head back east. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He goes back and turns around to go back and get return or get some of the spoils that they had already um, they already had there of um, of their labors. But then he was he was too wild that he got caught again. They 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 I guess they were watching anyway, <laughs> and they caught him again. How does he get out of it though the second time? Did they just run away? I think. Talking about the, the salt boilers, it, yeah. or is that before that? Yeah, no, the, yeah, you know, you Boone and, and some of the guys that they've got to get salt from a, a salt spring, which is a necessity because not only does it flavor food, but it preserves it. So they're out there boiling it, and uh, Boone is surrounded first, and he realizes very quickly, doing some simple math, that when you're drastically outnumbered and all the enemies have their guns ready and you don't, it's probably a good idea to surrender. And so he talks his party into surrendering, and uh, you know, they're taken to 
uh, Southern Ohio because the the Shawnee Nation oh, yeah. is centered around Chillicothe. Oh, I was talking about the first the first time he was captured. Oh, I'm sorry, first time. Sorry, yeah, go sorry. ahead. <laughs> uh, well, so, well, I mean that was pretty much it. Like he, because I believe he gets captured. Uh, they go, they let him free. He sneaks back around. They capture him again, but then they just, I think, uh, him and his partner just get get on a horse and ride away as fast as yeah, they can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but anyway. Back to Jemima's capture now. And uh, one thing, if you do Google this, which we got one up here on the, the YouTube, if you want to uh, check that picture out, there's plenty of pictures. That's one of the, I mean, if you just type in Daniel Boone, you will get a lot of drawings, pictures, uh, depictions of uh, Jemima Boone's capture. Uh, but yeah, they, they left um, as they were being captured. Like we said, you know, they, they whined. Uh, they acted like they were all three Daniel Boone's uh, daughters, because that gave them more of a, um, a bounty, I guess, if you want to say it that way, mm -hmm. um, a, a more of a reason. Maybe we shouldn't just kill these three. Uh, that might be uh, uh, so forth. But they were also tearing parts of the dress uh, in order to lead a trail or leave a trail, uh, which worked for a while. But then the Native Americans kind of caught on to that. And, um, but still, completely brave. Um, oh, yeah. uh, another, another interesting story about um, Jemima and I, I say this and I know there's probably people who probably may disagree or or or, or not um, you know, it is it is believed that you know Jemima Boone was not Daniel's uh, biological uh, daughter that it mm. was actually his brothers um, I don't remember which brother um, his brother's um, biological daughter that she that he had with Rebecca while Daniel Boone had been gone for two years or so, um, fighting in wars. Yeah. 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 Daniel Boone had been serving as a scout in the backwoods of North Carolina. And uh, when he returned home, you know, the story is that Rebecca you know, breaks down in tears and shares it with him. And uh, mm -hmm. like you said, it's hotly debated, but it, it's certainly something to be considered. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, uh, I, I'm sure there's people who are descendants of Jemima Boone that, uh, and, and, and with all, with all, uh, of, of it out there, you know, Daniel Boone raised her. He, she was his his daughter, uh, you know, true and true. Um, we we know that even today, you have many of uh, kids that are raised by step step parents or uh, foster parents or are adopted, and you know, you know, a, a father and a mother are people who take care of you. Uh, yep. Biological does not really, you know, is not really the end all be all. Um, right, it's not the definition of family. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the little bit of a side note, um, another compelling part of Daniel Boone, how much he was like, you know, um, you know I'll, I'll raise her as my own. And that's what he did. Um, right. uh, he forgave her and moved on. And uh, forgiveness is one of those things that is hard at times. And uh, if people took it a little bit, you know, took, uh, or did it a little bit more often, we may be in a little bit better of a world. <laughs> that's right. And, yeah, that might really point back to his, his Quaker upbringing. To some sense, mm -hmm. because forgiveness, forgiveness is key to all denominations within Christianity, obviously. But, you know, for the Shakers, it was a big deal. Yep. 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 Um, so, well, that, that goes to that point. And we were starting to talk about his second capture. Let's go back into it. So set the stage for that big capture, because this is probably one a Hollywood movie that has never been made, should be made um, of, of Daniel Boone being captured the second time or the biggest time. Um, by Native Americans. Go ahead and continue with that or, or start us out from the beginning. Well, it, you know, to, to echo something you said earlier, it really highlights how important it was that Boone and these early settlers knew these Indian paths uh, because you mentioned the story of Jemima. You know, Boone departs from the trail and to cut the Indians off. And if he hadn't had a knowledge of those paths, he wouldn't have been able to do that, probably would not have rescued his daughter and the Callaway girls. But the same thing with this scenario. The Indians, uh, you know, it's no coincidence that they catch Boone this time and, and these salt boilers. Uh, what's happened, Boone and uh, some of the men at Boonesboro had gone to boil salt at a salt lick. You need that to flavor food, but you need it to preserve it as well. So it's a mm -hmm. necessity. And they're out boiling uh, you know, salt water. And uh, Boone is captured first and, you know, doing some mental math, realizes they are completely outnumbered, mm -hmm. that uh, it's the, the better option is to surrender. So he talks his men into surrendering instead of fighting. They're captured, and the Indians lead them north as prisoners. And they end up in southern Ohio, in, in, uh, or centered around Chillicothe, which is where the Shawnee 
kind of were based at that time. And Boone uh, understands early on, it, it, it may seem like an obvious thing, but it wasn't to some of these guys that you're a prisoner. So you don't have to agree with everything that's being said, but it is in your best interest to at least somewhat ingratiate yourself to the people who hold your life in their hands. <laughs> and so Boone was great at, uh, he would engage in shooting contests or, or you know, competitions of different kinds and you do well to earn respect. And then maybe you lose at just the right time, you know, cause you don't yeah. want to anger anybody. And, uh, you know, Boone fills the role perfectly. He gets adopted, um, by the Shawnee chief, uh, Blackfish and he's, uh, named Sha Shialtali, right? Little mm -hmm. turtle or big turtle. Oh yeah. 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 And, big uh, turtle. Big turtle. Yeah. And so you know, he, he's given a name. He, he replaces a warrior in the chief's family and, uh, you know, gives the impression of assimilating into the tribe. And when the time finally comes uh, that he realizes a siege of Boonesboro is going to take place, uh, he mm -hmm. escapes. Because that had been the Indians' plan to begin with. They were on their way to siege Boonesboro. And, you know, catching Boone and these guys on the path is a bonus. Uh, but Boone convinces them. He's, you know, they're well-stocked. They're well-provisioned. You'll, you'll lose. Why not wait to the spring when they are use their winter supplies? And then you can yeah. smash them. And, uh, Which you know, wasn't true. <laughs> right. Not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're bought to afford a lot of time, but uh, yeah. he realized he has to make his move. And again, mm -hmm. leaving with no weapons, really, you know, no gun, and making his way back to Boonesboro that following spring, uh, just by knowledge of what he sees around him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's always been an amazement to me that he was able to do that. Yeah, and like you, you mentioned, how he knew where to go. I mean, I know roads. I know how roads work and I yeah. have a good idea of how to get around Lexington or how to get around Stanford or, or so forth. But these weren't roads as in big concrete paved roads. These are pathways. And, right. you know, he, he, he's so familiar, you know, with the wilderness. Like I think about if I was to wander around in Lincoln County or um, Rockcastle County in like a completely wooded area, I would probably get lost pretty quickly unless mm -hmm. I'd been in there a lot. And that, sh that shows you how much time he was in and around the area to know it so well. Um, and, and I do think about uh, those other, the other, the other people who were, were taken prisoners, they, they were not too happy. They were like, man, we should have fought bravely and you know, our honor. And Boone's like, right. listen, <laughs> like, you're still alive. <laughs> Let's be happy. We're alive. Um, you know, we can still get out of this and um, uh, just the, the cunningness, the, the wiseness and, uh, of uh, Daniel Boone in the sense, I'm just going to lie to him, act like, you know, yep. hey, guys, wait till next, wait till the spring, you know, you're going to lose. And, and it all it all worked out out for him. Uh, I think I think that um, Blackfish adopted him because Native Americans, you know, sometimes that when they adopted somebody, it was to replace a fallen member of their family or whatever. So, you know, they right. adopted Boone to replace his his son, uh, Blackfish's son that had uh, died. And that's what happened to a lot of those other men that were um, taken capt captive. Um, they were they were adopted into families and so forth. Um, not all of them, I, I don't believe, escaped because um, Boone knowingly, like you said, was uh, preparing his escape from the from the whole time. And it's one of those things I think Boone also kind of enjoyed the native American life or the, the aspect of the native Americans, you know, hunting, uh, that, that was kind of the big sport, but you said it too. He, he intentionally didn't win because native Americans were very prideful. Uh, right. did not want to, um, cause, cause if you, if you got to that point that you were just, you know, beating them, then you know, temp, tempers and all that stuff flares up and yeah. keep you cool, man. <laughs> right. Right. You're a threat to the, the status in the tribe. And you're right. He enjoyed it. And it's it's interesting because humanity is still this way. There are some people who can be around something and, and not really observe it or notice it. And then there are other people who can soak something in in a matter of minutes. And yeah. Boone had learned through his interactions with Native Americans how the culture worked and what was expected of him as someone being you know, assimilated into the tribe. And, you know, some of these guys had been in the wilderness for years as well. I mean, this was they had lived in the backwoods of, of Carolina, Virginia, you know, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. And yet they didn't seem to have the understanding that Boone did. And, and you're yeah. right. I think that speaks to his knowledge. You know, and, and as far as him finding his way back, you, as you said, these aren't super well-marked paths. I mean, for the guy who gets lost in a super Walmart, 
you know, that's a pretty <laughs> impressive. And uh, you're right, not everyone makes it back. The the one guy who does make it back that it it really looks bad on Boone is you know they're already treating Boone somewhat suspiciously because some some folks have escaped and they said Boone was talking with the Shawnee like they were buddies. And yeah. uh, Boone shows up and he gets a cold reception. He's like, guys, come on, I saved everybody. And then a, a man named Will Hancock, you know, makes it back you know, a few months after mm-hmm. Boone. Uh-huh. And he is not kind in his description of what went mm-hmm. down. And so now Boone's reputation and really his life is on the line because mm-hmm. first you got to deal with Blackfish and the coming Shawnee attack. Um, but when that's yeah. over, there's going to be a court martial and they're going to get uh-huh. to the bottom of it. You know, and it's hard to yeah. imagine Daniel Boone being court martial today. He's just such an American yes. icon. But, yeah. you know, different times. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, hindsight, of course, you know. Um, but yeah, so the, in, in the whole battle, I mean, he gets back to, um, uh, he, he escapes and it's very interesting how he escapes. Like he was actually saving gunpowder. I mean, he was, he, you know, I mean, it was well planned out. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like, he, of course, looking at hindsight, it was very well planned out. He knew what he was doing and he took his opportunity when it came because he knew that, uh, the native Americans were, it, he couldn't prevent it any longer. And um, he needed to get back to warn everybody. So he, he does that. He makes a big run. Uh, I, I don't know the uh, specs on you know southern Ohio to um, uh, Boonesboro, but that's long enough to know that <laughs> that's a pretty impressive um, haul to get to there before the oncoming attack is happening. Um, but he does make it there. Uh, he mm-hmm. prepares, you know, tells everybody it's coming. Uh, it, it is said, too, that nobody really knew who he was when he got there because he looked so different, uh, except for uh, his cat. His cat came and sat in his lap, and they're, oh, well, it's going to be Boone. You right. Know, we believe this guy. Um, at this point, his wife, uh, Rebecca, and the family had already uh, moved back. Mm-hmm. Uh, they um, uh, you know, probably thought he was dead again, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, Reasonably so, um, but Simon Kenton is at this uh, at Boonesboro at this time, so it's a it's it's it's, it's big, it's big, uh, uh, definitely in the yeah. upcoming <clears throat> the upcoming events. Um, so yeah, Blackfish and the troops they show up, they surround uh, the fort, uh, and the the siege is impending. Uh, there's a big standoff, um, but you can go to the reenactment. They have a, a Fort Bo- the siege of Fort Boonesboro reenactment. Um, I'm pretty sure it's yearly now. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it COVID was COVID anyway. I it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they had one this past year, so it's one of those things that you can definitely check out. Um, but yeah, um, Blackfish and uh, Boone meet. Kind of in, kind of. I mean, it's such a movie, man. I mean, this is like a movie, mm-hmm. uh, theatrical kind of thing. They go out and meet in the front of the fort, uh, not like right in front, but, you know, so far away, they, they talk, you know, you are my son. How have you forsaken me? Um, right. You know, this and that, let's have peace. Okay. Let's shake on it. Oh no. <laughs> you know, surprise attack. <laughs> it's all that. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So um, it goes down uh, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, shots are fired. Uh, Boone is hit. But good old Simon Kenton is there, and I have a there's a, there's a drawing of this. Uh, he runs out, uh, picks up Boone, uh, carries him back. Uh, you know, uh, if you've ever read um, uh, the Frontiersmen by Alan W. Eckert, uh, it has a pretty good description about what happens. Um, you know, uh, you know some so you know, I want to say uh, not. It, it, I don't know how 100% accurate it is. Um, but you know, there, there's some thematics there as well. Um, and I'm sure as it goes throughout for- folklore and people talking, it could be embellished a little bit as well. Um, yeah. but a pretty wild experience to go get Boone, pack him on your shoulder, uh, on his shoulders back, uh, basically saves Boone's life. Um, so Simon Kenton, of course, deserves a lot of notification or oh, yeah. uh, recognition or, re- uh, um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Recognition. Recognition. That's it. Yeah. Uh, for uh, for helping out, you know, helping settle Kentucky and also saving Daniel Boone's life. Um, but the siege lasts for eleven days, I believe. Um, is it a, is it eleven or 
Eight. I can't eight. Maybe I'm getting confused. Fort Logan, the siege on Fort Logan was 11 days. Uh, yeah. But Boonesboro, eight, and it eventually um, – Eventually, it just starts raining so much, and the Native Americans sees sees it as a um, a, a negative sign from the gods that um, you know it's, it's a lost cause. Mm -hmm. And they were also trying to build a tunnel into the fort, right? Which the rain just you know, soaked in the ground, uh, collapsed, uh, so that fell through, um, and that's it. No, nobody, no frontiersmen. Uh, people in the fort, uh, they did not, uh, I don't think they died. Anybody in the frontier or in the fort died. Um, there was a few casualties for the Native Americans, of course. Um, that was about it, I think, with that battle. It, you know, right. it, it is interesting. You're right. The, the dance they have to go through before this thing goes down. I mean, Boone realizes early on this is a trap, and he points out the Blackfish. Mm -hmm. He said, I got representatives, but you got twice as many representatives on your side. He says, well, it's just the way we do things, you know, different factions in the tribe. And Boone's like, yeah, but all these guys look like warriors. You know, they're young, <laughs> they're armed, and Blackfish yeah. is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And of course, you see the ambush. And uh, yeah. you're right, the Indians had realized that to take down a fortified position, you either need a cannon, uh, which, you know, in the Revolution, you have Ruddles Station and Martin Station, Ruddles Mill and Martin Station, where uh, proof of that, or you've got to find a way inside the fort. And that tunnel is their best bet. And to their credit, I mean, you know, it, looked like it had every chance of success until they had that gully washer. And that really, uh, you know, brought things to a close. You realize your powder's wet, you know, your tunnel's collapsed. You're, you've probably lost. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's, there's no hope. There's nothing, nothing good coming of it. Um, now during the siege, you know, there's the, um, the reports of like women and children helping, you know, load muskets, uh, doing everything they can. Cause it was not, as fortified as Daniel Boone led it to believe in the first place, there was not you know, jam packed full of settlers. Um, it was right. a very kind of an uh, unmanned fort. Um, uh, but uh, they, they withheld it. They did what they could. Um, and it, it all ended up working out. Um, but then the other prisoner returns and he, uh, not so kind words to Boone about Boone and his chumminess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he wasn't buying into the strategy at all. I mean, this seemed completely authentic to him. I mean, Boone must have been an awesome actor, you know, because yeah. for everyone to see, you were on their side. And uh, now, Boone, you go from being lost to people are suspicious of you. Now you're a hero again because you saved the fort, and now you're back on trial. And uh, so Boone is court-martialed, and, of course, he's acquitted. Uh, but I, I really think that has an effect on Boone. Uh, because, yep. you know, after that, he goes back to get Rebecca and the family. Mm -hmm. I think Jemima, was Jemima still at the fort? Hadn't she remained behind? She was the only one. Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I think, I think so. So when he goes to get Rebecca and brings well, the family back. I think because she, she was really, she was either was about to get married or it had gotten married, I think. But That's no. right. That's right. So, yes, yeah, so she, had, she had a reason to remain behind. You, when they come back, they don't go to Boonesboro. They end up mm -hmm. at Boone Station. And I think Boone wanted that distance uh, because uh, he was hurt. You know, he, he's Colonel Daniel Boone. He, he single-handedly yeah. is the reason those people are alive today and the treatment he yeah. got. And a lot of that seems to be led by Richard Calloway, it, it seems. So at least maybe that's just my opinion. And, you know, yeah. you seem to be kind of close-knit at one point. I mean, the Calloway girls were with Jemima when she gets captured. That's just yeah. two years earlier. What yeah. happened? I mean, living, living together in a fort, I realize, is not fun, and you probably make some enemies. <laughs> But yeah. what transpired between those two people? That's the part of Kentucky yeah. history we'll never know. But I, mm -hmm. something happened because yeah, it was not him. He's kind of gunning for him, you know, in a way. Oh, you mm -hmm. know, you went and you went and lived with them and planned all this, and uh, you you just you're just picking the winning side. You know, right. it is what it is. But he was he was acquitted of the court martial, which he was tried at Fort Hare, like like uh, you said there, and um, uh, just or was it Fort Logan? I think it was Fort Logan. <laughs> yeah, it's Fort Logan. Yeah, my bad. Fort Logan. Mm -hmm. um, and and, uh, and but yeah, so he gets to that point. Um, and I can understand, man. I mean, I would be kind of, you know, it's like, it's like I think of like a sports person. You know, they win the game, uh, the big game one one day. The next week they lose it, and they're like, oh, you're just terrible. It's like, you know, 
Yeah. Well, your name's on the stadium. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Boonsboro. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what more yeah, endorsement I mean, do you need? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it is. I mean, you know, I'm sure there was political issues or some sort of thing that was probably pushing things as well. And, and to yeah. to the point that like the the one prisoner who came back and he's like, hey, you know, this guy was best friends with all these Native Americans. I mean, he was basically. The, the chief's son, he was uh, somebody up there. He got a squall, too. I mean, he, he was it was crazy. Um, and, too, like hearing about how the prisoners were kind of a bit like, man, you surrendered to all of us. We could have took them. And he's like, right. no, 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 guys. It, it, I, I can understand, I guess. I can see how somebody could be suspicious or have their doubts. But then at the end of it all, what he said is true and what Boone did was true. And it worked out the way, you know. You would think he would want it to work out. I mean, would you want I mean, people to take the fort named after you? No. Yeah. And it seems obvious. And even if that was your intent, why run away to begin with? Right? I mean, yeah. why warn yeah. the fort if you were truly on the native side? So, yeah, it, it seems obvious in retrospect. But fear can breed a lot of emotions. And I think yes. the seed doubt. itself, it wore people yeah. down. Fear, fear and doubt, man. Oh, it yeah. was. But, um. So yeah, he goes to Boone Station, um, and now where was it located compared to the fort? It's a little east, but it was ten miles, something like that. Not terribly far. Uh, yeah, that's the way it was for most of those stations. You were pretty close to a fort yeah, in case something yeah. happened. But yeah, yeah, far far enough away that you could keep some privacy. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would understand. I wouldn't want to go stay back there with them all, all those guys saving their lives. <laughs> right. <laughs> Take me to court over it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's not the end of his, his stint in uh, in uh, in Kentucky, but this is the point that kind of his family is growing. Um, his his brother, even his brother uh, Squire, and, and so forth. They're they're kind of expanding out. Um, he goes to um, he ends up going up north um, mm-hmm. and starting a tavern in um, is it Maysville? I think I yeah. want to say. Um, yeah. And him and Jemima, not Jemima, him and uh, Rebecca. Uh, run that for a while. Um, now, uh, one thing uh, he does actually own some slaves that help um, run that tavern, um, uh, but they, they do that for a while. Of course, you know, not really Daniel Boone's forte to sit yeah. and uh, do it, you know, do a tavern. Uh, but this is also at the time that all of his um, land stuff or his land issues begin to come up. And uh, you know, it's like, like you said, all these people came over here. They uh, surveyed the land, but then some of them, Simon Ken included, you know, were, were, were land rich, but yet ended up being very poor. Uh, yeah. and, and Daniel Boone's situation is like that. That that's pretty much his time in Kentucky. Once he once uh, he moves there, I don't think he settles anymore in Kentucky. Um, yeah, he he bounces backwards and forwards. You're right between West Virginia, and Kentucky, and of course, uh, you're right with the land issues. Boone was a great explorer, not a great surveyor. And uh, so I I will toss out my my one conspiracy theory. Um, Daniel Boone has a court case with James Herod over property. And Herod Herod disappears before it is settled. Oh, I'm not. No, (laughs) obviously that wasn't. It wasn't the reason, but it is true. There, you know, th- th- there were so many people that were after Boone over property, uh-huh. and uh-huh. Uh, he, he just hadn't done it well. It, even some of the investments he had been charged with, I think, get stolen from him. He was mm-hmm. given money to purchase land and that kind of thing. Yeah. The whole answer at that time was so confusing. We're going to stop our conversation again uh, with David here, and we're going to continue next week. So uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody.
while you're here. If you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel, the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable, once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.